Oh, we got a couple people. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hey guys, this is Ike Ellis, and I'm sitting on the conference floor of SQL Pass, and with me is Brad Cunningham. We're going to start the meeting right now. Hopefully you guys are all ready to talk about um, the fourth, this is the fourth meeting for delivering business intelligence. Brad, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How's SQL Pass going? SQL Pass is awesome. We had a keynote today where they talked about SQL 2014 going to CTP2 today. So... Hey, you know what? Just so you guys know, I know this is kind of off topic, but if you guys have ever been to Windows Azure Management Portal, um, you guys can just click on Windows Azure. This isn't the Management Portal, but um, once you sign in, so I'm going to sign in real quick, and I want to show you kind of a cool thing with SQL 2014. If you haven't seen this before, it's kind of neat, and that is the day this is the cool thing I think about Azure and the cloud. So I just go to my portal, and then once it pops up, um, you can just start a VM right now. So these are all my VMs. And I had CTP1 in a VM. And then the minute they announced it in the keynote, you just create a new virtual machine right in Azure from the gallery. And then they have this. See this, Brad? Can you see this? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I was just going to ask. Uh, so they have it for VMs. Have they already released an option if you run just a database, right? Because you can run an Azure, SQL Azure database. I guess that's always being updated, right? So it's kind of running on the same. Yeah, that's always that's always being updated. And they, they say it's already on 2014. Yeah, but, cool. you know, the Azure database is fully feature ready, right? So I just think it's an amazing thing where they're like, hey, we're announcing this, here's some new features, and because there's a Azure VM gallery, five minutes later you can be playing with it while they're talking, right? You could spin this up and be testing out the features while they're talking. It's just way cool. That's cool. So what's the, um, um, what's the big feature in 2014 that we need to be aware of? Hecaton is the big feature in memory um, in memory indexes for um, and um, data structures for um, an OLTP workload. So we've had in memory stuff for um, BI for a long time with Power Pivot, and now this is like an in memory workload for um, for transactional stuff. And it's make you know you get like a ten times performance gain when you use it. So they have really cool demos in the keynote. You can see the keynote. That's free, so anybody can go see the keynote and see. It's a lot to wade through to find out about Hecaton, but there are other demos of it on there already. All Sweet. right, guys. Um, yeah, I apologize if there's a lot of noise because I'm sitting on the floor of the conference. People are walking by. I couldn't find a room, so <laughs> we're just going to do the best we can. Um, okay. So today, the two modules we're going to talk about are going to be MDS, scripting, whole new language for a lot of us. Um, did you get a chance to read these, Brad? I did. Um, I'm not sure that I understood it all. This is definitely pushing the limits. You know, I, I'm coming from the development mindset, and this pushes my limits of understanding um, when it comes to databases. So I, I definitely am got a lot of things to learn here, I think. Um, and maybe one quick yeah. administrative thing for everybody on the call. I don't think we touched on this. Um, you know, you should have a Q&A box there on webinar. You can shoot us some questions. Uh, if any of you have a, a mic and headphones, we're more than happy to unmute you, and you can just ask the question directly so it can get recorded. Um, so if you have a question, uh, use the raise your hand feature. You can go to webinar if you could, and then uh, we'll make sure to unmute you and give you an option to speak. Or if you don't have a mic, you can just type it right in there, and we'll try to take care of those. Yep, 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 yep. That's good. So you guys can test out raising your hand right now. I don't know if you guys can find that, but if you um, raise your hand right now, yep, that's how you do it. Perfect. Cool. So, um, perfect. All right. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about some basic MDX. Let's let's take it from like where Brad is. Right. First of all, first of all, just like two minutes. This is 
like a basic cube browser that's right in here. See where I am? You guys right up here? I'm in SQL Server Management Studio right here, right? So the way I got here, I'm going to close this. And I have a, this is a sample database that you can install with analysis services. So notice that I'm in Object Explorer right up here. And I'm connected to analysis services in Object Explorer. And I've got this AdventureWorks sample right here. And inside the sample, I have cubes. And this is one of the cubes, AdventureWorks. And if I right click on that cube, I can just browse it. And I get a cube browser right here. And this cube browser lets me pull either you know, facts or dimensions um, from my little explorer here, right? Got a little explorer window, and I can like grab internet sales amount and just drop it right here. And so this is giving me the total internet sales amount in the cube of about 29.3 million, right? Pretty easy. Yeah. And so if I want to, if I want to grab the date, like let's just say like calendar year right here, and drop it now, it slices that 29 million into four chunks for, you know, it's a little bit dated of the sample, but 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2008. Pretty easy so far? Yeah, how do you know, so yeah. you just dragged a, you just dragged the calendar year on there. How do you know what's being applied to your query now? Well, it's, um, it basically, what do you mean what's being applied to it? It just kind of divided up the total by year. Point. Right, right. So if I'm looking at this screen, how do I know that that's what happened? Is there a place where I see the MDX? Or like, I, I noticed the box above says dimension, select dimension, but it doesn't actually show that you applied, a, you sliced up that number, right? So this, this is really a different query than what you had originally, which was to just pull over the, the fact, I guess it was, right? Right. Well, it does apply MDX. We can profile it and we can see that it, it created MDX for us. Um, and then, you know, I know what you want, is you want to be able to, like, just say, I want to see the MDX that, that it wrote mm. for you. But yeah. unfortunately, like, there's a lot of ugliness in this MDX, right? Mm -hmm. So we can kind of, like, take out the cell properties probably, right? And we could probably format this a little bit better um, and I can show you what some of this stuff does. Um, like, we can take out. I think I was just wondering, like, from the from the designer view you saw there. Um, yeah. Like, for instance, what if you want to remove the calendar date piece you just dragged on? How do you go back? Oh, just drop it back. Just drag. Oh, it back. I see. I see. So when you dropped it, it added that new column, and then oh, okay, okay. Right. I got. Yeah, it, it added a new column. And yeah. and now good no I like to and if you want to see it by month you can drop a month there too and now it added that column. Got it. Very like user oriented, right? It's not like a developer tool when you browse a cube. It's like what users would do if they were gonna kind of go on a data exploration journey. Right? And if you want to see the MDX for that, just take it out of the design view. And you can see the MDX for that. So, but it's kind of ugly. Um, and then you can slice it the way you would think you wanted to. Like if I go to date and I say by calendar year, I only want to see like I only want to see 2007. And then um, right down here you click OK, and then now it just shows you January to December 2007. And if I take a month off, it just shows me one value, like 2007. So, um, and then I can just right click and delete and go back to how it sliced before. So I'm kind of showing you this because this tool uses MDX in order to create numbers that look like this. So when we write MDX, we're also going to be creating numbers that look like this. And, and it's not just this tool that uses MDX, it's also Excel that uses MDX. So if I just, this is Excel, right? It's just a blank workbook, right? And, and I can say data, grab it from an existing connection. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to say from other data sources, from analysis services, so you can see this. 
So this is just localhost. Usually I just put a dot there, but I like this. This is also localhost, that little dot. But um, I typed it in so you can see what I was doing. Okay. So localhost, and remember, adventure works cube, right? I'm grabbing it from that multidimensional project, the sample, and I'm taking the adventure works cube, and then I'm just going to click finish. I already have it there, so it's asking me if I want to overwrite it. And then it says, well, what do you want, a pivot table, a pivot chart? What? And I say, okay, I want a pivot table. And then what I get is this thing over here. What did I do before? I did, like, internet sales amount. So, um... Let me find the internet sales amount and drag it over to values. See that 29 million that I have before? That's 400. And then I can grab like my calendar year that I had before and just put it under rows. Now this tool is even cooler because I can expand. You know how I got to month, right? I can, I can kind of expand the month. Right? Even to the day. So this is, this is pretty interesting. I mean, in your experience, who is using this? Is this business people that actually do this in Excel or are these kind of database developers that know how to do this in Excel? Um, I think it's, it's both. I mean, this Excel is the best business tool, right? But I definitely think that it's both people do it. I'm in Excel all the time. Um, typically what happens to me is people will say, we want this data, and they don't want to use the pivot table. So I create it for them and format it correctly and highlight things that they want highlighted and do conditional formatting. Like you can do in here, you can do conditional formatting, you know, just like normal. Like I can add color scales for the whole column if I want it. So I can say, like, you know, I want that kind of color scale, so it goes darker as it gets a higher number, right? Just do all kinds of silly formatting like that. Hmm, that's interesting. So you're um, telling me that I should learn how to use Excel better? Yeah, I think so. I think Excel is very powerful, and I'll tell you something. Excel is just, it's just not going away. You know, it, it is just getting, like, more and more amazing. So... Yeah, I think it's worth learning. Um, I think Microsoft wants to make Excel. It's already ubiquitous, right? But I think it wants to compete with really hardcore data visualization tools like Tableau and ClickView. So they keep just throwing more and more features into it. Yep. OK, so does that give us like a starting point before we do MDX? Because MDX is kind of hairy, right? Yeah, I think that's cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Are you good, Are you good, Brad? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it, okay, I'm good. Do we, have any, do we have any questions or anything? Um, there's a couple... I think it was just... So, um, I'm going to murder this name. I'm sorry. Medjula was just responding, saying that they use the Excel piece um, to for reporting. They, take, they use the Excel thing you just showed to decide how the data... You know, how they want the data to look. And then once they figure that out, then they go ahead and make a report out of it. So, so yeah, we do that too. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's just too cumbersome to do that in reporting. So you do it a hundred times and you know six hours, and then once you have what they want, then you can publish it. Okay, so. You know, you guys are probably used to Transact SQL, and I'm kind of going off of the assumption that you've seen Transact SQL before. So, like, in Transact SQL, you would say something like, select star from AdventureWorks, right? That, that's a Transact SQL statement. Well, that is almost like MDX, almost. We don't need the star. And so when I hit F5 on this, I get this, like, $80 million right here. Isn't that crazy? Like... It gave me a number, and it didn't even tell me what that number was. It's kind of silly, huh? So um, I know what that number is because I'm familiar with my cube. It's my reseller sales amount, and I can prove that by dragging my reseller sales amount here, and I can execute it and get an error. And the error 
it's just a terrible error. It just says, I don't think you have permission to do what you want to do. But that, per that error is not what the problem is. The error is, in MDX, it matters. What we're doing is we're kind of making some multidimensional data look tabular. We have to tell MDX where to put it. So we can say, hey, put this on rows. And if I, if I say I want this amount on rows, I'm going to get another error. And it's going to say, access numbers specified in a query must be sequentially specified and cannot contain gaps. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I see these errors to people who are new to MDX all the time. So what I can do is instead of saying on rows, I can say on columns. And now I see that reseller sales amount right here um, appropriately, the way I would expect to see it. So, so the next thing I can do is I can take that order date, that I, or the date that I had before, where I had calendar year. So I can take calendar year and just drag it and drop it there. And if, if reseller sales amounts on columns, I can put calendar year on rows and run it. Oh, and now you're thinking, well, I was hoping to see calendar year down here. And we're not seeing it because um, there's such a thing as a default member. And the default member is 99% of the time, it's going to be the all items member, the very top level member um, of a dimensional hierarchy. So in this case, it summed all the periods together. That's the default member. If I want the actual calendar years, I can say, I want the row, un I want all the records underneath the default member. That's what numbers does. So when I hit F5 to execute that, now, we're getting something that looks more like we saw in the cube browser. And we're, it's, it's a little bit different because we have items for 2009 and 2010, and we also have all periods put in there, but it looks somewhat familiar. And we can change this too. We can say, instead of dot members, we want dot children. And now, now we're really looking at something that looks familiar. Um, are you with me so far, Brad? I think I'm sticking with you. I'm a little confused that those things in the result set look a little like buttons. What's that all about? Yeah, it's just the way they choose. It's not buttons. Okay. It's the way, just the way they choose to display it. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm following with you. Yeah. Now you saw I went from dot members to dot children, and we'll 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 hang there for just a second. I want to show you some synonyms for on columns and on rows. Um, you can also do on axis zero is a synonym for on columns, and on axis one is a synonym for on rows. So when I execute that, I get the exact same results. So you know technically we could have access three or something, but what is what happened? Remember at the very beginning when I said um, on rows. So let's just do on rows, and let's take this out. And the error I got was, hey, the axis have to be sequentially specified and cannot contain gaps. This is like axis one. And then we put that back and run it. And it knows what to do, because there's axis zero and axis one right down here. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm wondering what your recommendation is here. It seems like on columns and on rows makes a lot more sense than using the axis shortcuts. Um, I've seen it both ways. So as long as you know that there are synonyms, I don't think I have a hard. I don't think I. You know, a lot of the time in MDX, you're reading MDX at a tool generator. So it's important to know all the things so that when the tool makes a decision to do one or the other, you know what they're talking about. Okay, um, that makes sense. I think we, we have a, a question here too. It says, um, what do what are these words, children and members? So what does children mean here again? Can you clarify that? Sure. So if you look over here, I'm going to expand this so that you can see the actual dimension here. Um, I don't know why that's not. There we go. Um, do you see how there's the calendar hierarchy? And then inside the calendar hierarchy, we have like calendar year. Um, and then we have 
like semester and quarter and month and date, right? Well, by default, you don't see it here, but by default, there's one right above calendar year called all members. And that that's what happens when you don't specify the dot children, is you get the all members level of the hierarchy. And so what I'm doing is the equivalent of saying, I want everything underneath that first level. I want the second level. You know, what I could do is I could be explicit here and just say calendar year. I want calendar year, and then I want the actual calendar year level. And if I did that, I'd get the same results. But it looks kind of funky to have it here twice. What you're doing is you're saying, I want to take the calendar year hierarchy, and then I want the calendar year level, not the all items level, the one that's by default above it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. They said they got okay. it. Okay, cool. All right. So so I still have some null values here that I didn't have in Excel. Remember this? Like when we come back to the way this looks, there's no null items here. And in my query, I do have null items. Now, if we were in Transact SQL, we would say something like where calendar year is not null, right? We plug that in brackets. That does not work in NDX. Uh, but I just wanted to like make sure we're all on the same page, right? You guys are used to some, a query that looks like that. We don't use where clauses like that, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill that. Okay. In MDX, MDX is just a function-based language, and so if we were going to like look at our web browser, I usually use Chrome, but I don't know why I use. Um, but if we if we looked at like MDX function reference, if you really want to learn MDX learning these functions is like super important. And you can see all these functions that are available to us. And just the more you know about what these functions do, the more you'll master MDX and really be really find it much, much easier. So so Googling, you know, MDX function reference and then learning these things, really important. I know it's a lot, but really, really important. Pretty much, if you're looking for functionality in MDX, it's a function. As opposed to in Transact SQL, it's a keyword. Well, there's just not that many keywords in MDX. Um, very, very few, as a matter of fact. It's Everything's done in a function. So what I can do is, if I want to get rid of those nulls, is I can use the non-empty function here. Say I just want the non-empty items here, and it, see what that did. It just stripped out the non-empty items, and it gave me something that looks a lot like this. Now these numbers aren't matching because I've been using reseller sales amount. I can just change this to internet sales amount and run it, and now see these numbers are perfect, right? Yeah, same numbers down here. Um, Yeah, so already we're like MDX masters, right? We've, we've learned about functions and we've changed some members and yeah, this uh, is cool. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add MDX as a skill to my LinkedIn now. I'm totally an expert. You're totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's important to kind of know the difference between a tuple and a set, and this is a uh, kind of confusing if you've never seen the difference between a tuple and a set, but Cubes are complicated. They have they have levels and they have summary levels, right? So, so um, even though you think we're getting a lot of data here, we're actually just asking for a tuple of data. We're saying I want all the data that you have for calendar year, specifically the internet sales amount in calendar year. But I can be kind of weird about this. Like let's let's simplify this and take the non-empty out of it, and then. Um, I can say I want a specific calendar year right here. I can say like I want CY 2007, calendar year 2007, and execute that. And there's calendar year 2007. That's a tuple. That's that's one summarized item out of my queue. But that 9.7 million. And just to take you back to Excel, 
it's this one right here, that 9.7 million. So that's a tuple. If I said, you know what, I want to see 2007 compared to 2008, I can just comma delimit it and say this one is 2008 and execute it, and I get an, I get an error here. It says, the statement dialect could not be resolved due to ambiguity. It's because I switched from using a tuple to a set. And um, sets get surrounded in curly braces. And now I have both items here. Um, so that's two different cell values coming out, 9.7 million for 2007 and 9.791 you know, 9 and 9.770 for 2008. So I can, it looks like my internet sales went down year over year. That, that seems to me like it's a bad thing. And I can do the same thing. You know, if I if I wanted another year, as long as it's inside the curly braces, I can say now give me you know 2005, comma the one with that, and then execute it. And there's 2005 is my third item right there. So, and I and I don't have to just keep using date here too. So let's let's do a different navigation. I I, I imagine that a lot of you have used. The AdventureWorks database, so you're probably somewhat familiar with AdventureWorks, but I can say I want product.category. And now here's the big question, Brad. What do you think is going to return when I click execute if I want product.category? Well, I think from what you were saying earlier, it's going to return all the members, right? So you're not saying dot children. Brad, you're like, you're like my favorite student. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and then if I do dot children and I execute, I get like accessories, bikes, clothing, components. It looks like I'm not really selling any components here. And then but so I just to also... make sure I remember, so that components one is null, so you could put not empty in front of it to get rid of that row, right? I have to try it. Non empty, yeah. Nice. Boom, Brad. Yeah, I All guess right. you can put MDX on LinkedIn. <laughs> so you got to endorse me for it, though. Yeah, I'll endorse you for it. Okay, so so there's there's got children, and then or we could do you know to answer that person's earlier question, what did dot children do? We can just do dot category dot category to say we want the category level of that hierarchy, and we'll say, oh yeah, we'll give you we'll give you what you want, or I can say, I just want Bikes. We just get bikes, and then same thing, right? If I if I take this bikes one, and I say now I want clothing, I get the error. And what's the fix for the error? Tap it in curly braces. That's right, because it's because it went from being a tuple to a set. So curly braces means set, and boom, that's exactly what you do. And I can say now I also want accessories. So I take that. And the big question is, can I spell accessories? Looks like I can. I got lucky there. Okay. So. So what what would happen? What would be the error here if you were to inside this set you were to try to look at a different child besides category? You can't do that's that. That's an right? excellent question. No, you can't do that. Look at you. you you're like leading me. Yeah. You can't do that, and that's because the rules for a set, and I should write this down so everybody can see it, is, and let's just change the font so that I can guarantee it. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Sets are made up of one, zero, one, or more tuples, and they have the same dimensionality. So it's illegal to have tuples in a set that are defining dimensions at different levels. That's one of the main rules of sets. So yeah, if I if I tried to say, oh, and in addition, I want something see I'm still in like the product dimension, right? But I could say, and I want like 
a specific product line, like I want the oh well, it, like yeah, touring product line here, and then execute that, and then it says no, tuples or sets must use the same hierarchies in a function. That's a, another way of saying exactly what I just said, which is that they have to have the same dimensionality. Yeah. So thinking through that further, you could create a second set and wrap it in another set of curly braces. Like how could you include another, I guess you'd be including another dimension, the, the product line dimension. So that you're asking a very complicated question, Brad. Okay. And the, my, but to answer your question briefly, um, the first thing is, yes, I have done this before because I've had a need to do it before. But my first reaction when you ask that is I would say, why would you want to do that? Like, from a problem-solving perspective, why would we do that? Most people, if you're a decision stakeholder, you won't be comparing one product to an entire product line, right? Typically, that doesn't happen. And if somebody said, I do want to compare you know, all my red products to all my clothing, I, I would say, OK, let me think how I can present this and then give it to you. Um, so usually in that, thinking it through, it lends itself to how you would actually write the MDX. So rather than like writing it for you in front of you right now, maybe if, if we want to still do that at the end, I'll show you how to do that, but it's, it, is, it makes the MDX pretty ugly. Oh, okay. that's fine. I think like a developer, not like a business person. That's why I ask these questions. Right, and that's the challenge with MDX is you really have to think about what does the business person want to do and why. You, if you're going to be a great MDX author, you always have to think, why do they want this data? What decision are they trying to make? Because it will be obvious to you, once you know that, what data to bring in to show them so that they can make that decision better. Um, okay. So we do have a where clause, but it doesn't use an equal sign, like where we would say where calendar year equals 2007, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So what we can do in a where clause, and it filters just like a where clause does, but we call it a slicer. And what I can do is just grab 2007 and drop it here, and then execute, and look at all those numbers drop. See how they all went much lower than they were before. If I if I highlight it without the where clause, I get like twenty eight million three thirty nine and seven hundred, and then if I execute with the where clause, it drops to nine million one hundred thirty eight thousand two ninety three. Right. So. So that's that's a where clause, and this is going to look funny to you because in T SQL, this part would be a string literal, right? We would just enclose it in single, in um in single quotes, right? But here, um, we actually put in the actual member identifier here. And this is a really big difference between MDX and Transact SQL. And the big difference is where data is pretty much unknown to Transact SQL and gets executed at runtime, in MDX, that data contributes to the, the physical structure of the cube and is very well known inside MDX. So MDX knows what data is in the dimensions and in order to bring back the numbers of that that you care about. That's a huge difference. It's a huge paradigm shift when coding MDX versus coding um, TC wall. So um, I can show you also, I can show you sets here because we can say, hey, I want 2008 and 2009, or 2007, 2008, excuse me. And again, curly braces, because I'm dealing with a set, and I execute, and these numbers go up, right? They, they double, pretty much, because I'm pulling in two years here. Notice that, that they're not displayed, like I'm not dividing it up in two years, right? I'm just filtering it by two years. If instead of filtering it by two years, I wanted to divide it up by two years, this is where this gets kind of complicated, right? I can I have a multiple multiple ways of writing it. I think I'm going to write it the simple way. So let's kind of simplify this query, this top query, a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to take bike data for now. 
and there's bike data. And if I wanted bike data for 2007 and 2008, I can use parentheses and specify the different tuples in the set. So I could say, give it to me for 2000 bikes for 2007, and then comma delimit, excuse me, and then give me the exact same data for 2008. And then closing curly brace, so it's going to get a little ugly here. I could do a little bit better formatting. Highlight that and execute it. Um, excuse me, I need a comma there in between there. A comma there. Highlight that, execute it. Um, see, this is what I get for like writing stuff on the fly. Um, I think you're missing a curly brace. No, I've got too many curly braces. Too many. Is the okay. problem. Yeah, too many. Yep. Okay, and there we go. So it's interesting how now those sets are on rows and you're seeing, oh, here's the bike data for 2007 and here's the bike data for 2008 and I'm looking at internet sales amount. Isn't that interesting? Now, I could make this look a little bit cleaner and I know you're going to hate me for showing you all these different ways of writing the exact same thing, but what you're doing in MDX is you're actually creating um, you're actually creating presentation. You know, presentation is like super important. So what I can do is I can say I want internet sales amount and I want it for 2007 on columns with the exact same data. Um, let's see, too many commas. It's actually a tuple, excuse me. Okay. And now you're seeing 2007, right? And now what we want is 2008. So let's bring the set in, copy this whole thing. And then comma delimited, and then close curly brace, and make this 2008, and now highlight and execute that. And now same data, right? Just a different way of presenting it. So, um, and then we can come back if we like those bikes. Remember how we had this? I can just take the bikes off and instead say. Give me all the categories, not just bikes, and then execute that. And now I get accessories, bikes, clothing, you know, components, and I get it by 2007 and 2008 side by side. Kind of like business stakeholders probably want to see a comparison, you know, similar to this, right? The business side likes to see something like this. So you play with MDX and you really make a huge difference in how the data gets presented. So let me let me ask you another question. What if I wanted to look at uh, so earlier in this, before we split by all these different dimensions, we were looking at 2007 and 2008 added together, just a sum, right? So we were looking at bikes, and we were looking at the total for 2008, 2007, 2008 added together. What if I wanted to, say, do an average instead of a sum? How would we do that? Oh, okay. Again, you're asking like an advanced question, but it's just a function, <laughs> okay. right? Uh, um, it is. It, it's, just, it's just a function, and I can... Sh let me... I hate to like defer you, but um, let me like show you some of the basics first, and then and then we'll come back to that. Um, but I think we have we'll have time to show that. Okay. Okay. So let's. The next thing I want to do is I want to look take a look at internet sales amount, and I want to like order it. So let's let's start off with like a new query down here. Um, Okay, and this query, okay, this query looks a little ugly, 
but rather than have you write it, I just want to show you what it does. So it takes sales territory country children. So this is all the sales territory country. And then it takes the product category children and then um, and displays that. So you can see like Australia and bikes and actually let me take this part out for right now. Let's take the order out for right now. And let's just execute this simple query as it's written. So you can see sales territory country is Australia, Canada, France, right? And then product category is accessories, bikes, clothing, right? And so it, you're seeing the country and then the product and then the internet sales amount for all of those. Does that make sense so far? Yep. Okay, it's actually a pretty simple query. And then what does this non-empty do? Of the nulls. Takes the nulls. Like if I deleted that and executed it, you can see that there are nulls in the data. And, right. And we want to see that like Australia components didn't sell any, so we want to take those nulls out. So if we put non-empty back in, no nulls. Okay. Now, let's pretend something. Let's pretend that we want this data organized by internet sales amount, meaning I want to see my country and cat product category that sold the most up at the top and the one that sold the least down at the bottom. So I can tell you right now, this top is going to be United States bike at 8.9 million, almost 9 million. I want that on the top and everything else on the bottom. So if I go back to my function reference, and I search for order, we can, we can click on order, and it says the order function will arrange members of a specified set, optionally preserving or breaking the hierarchy. And it shows you the order right here. So if I come back here, and I say, OK, I want to order this. Let's, um, let's put that there, and then get a whole new line. And then it says, OK, you want to order those members, but what do you want to order them on? And what I want to order them on is internet sales amount. That's what I want to order it on. And then if I if I highlight that order and I hit play, it orders, okay, it does some funky things. The first thing it does is it orders ascending, not descending. So if I want descending, I have to specify desk. Highlight that. Um, let's see. Uh, I need that desk is a parameter. So it's not a keyword like in Transact SQL. So you need to comma delimit it. OK. So now I'm getting a high number up here. But Brad, what's happening? Can you see that data and see? Remember, I said I wanted United States bikes at the top at 8.9 million, and instead, I'm getting Australia at 8.8 .8 million, and it goes Australia, bikes, accessories, clothing, Canada, bikes, accessories, clothing, France, bikes, accessories, clothing, and then, and so forth, right? So what's happening? It's, it's ordering that first column descending, but not, not internet sales amount, right? That's Actually, what it like. almost. It kind of looks like that, but that's not exactly what it's doing. Look at this data. Australia, 8.8 .8 million, 138,000, 70,000. Canada, 1.8, 103, 53. Right. What it's doing is it's preserved. Oh, I think we just lost you there, Ike. Can you still hear us? It's alphabetically. Yeah, it's ordering internet sales amount numerically, but keeping the hierarchy. And if we go back, it actually said that. See this highlighted part? Optionally preserving or breaking the hierarchy. It, it, it's doing that part of it. It's preserving the hierarchy. If we want to break the hierarchy, we have to put a B here. For B descending says break the hierarchy and go descending. And if I execute that, now I get United States bikes up here at the top at 8.9 million. All the way down, Germany doesn't buy a lot of clothes for me, 23,000. So you'll notice that all the bikes sell the most up here, then a couple accessories sell, and then United States 
which sells a lot of clothing, then a couple more accessories, then Australia has some clothing, and then down and so forth. So what I want you to learn from this is, in Transact SQL, we would just do order by, right? It would look something like that. And there's no order by in MDX. Remember, it's a function language. And so um, very, very function-based. And so you have to remember these functions. So if you want functionality, like something as simple as, hey, I want to order some stuff, you go back to that reference, and you do what I did. I did a control F for order or sort. I could have done sort, and it would have said, oh, there's a whole bunch of things that do sorts. But which one do you want? And eventually, I would have found, um, I would have found order. So, although I guess not, I guess I thought sort would have brought order up, but there's order and it says arrange. Oh well, that, that technique didn't help me, but um, maybe sort for a couple of different synonyms and I think you'll find it. Uh, do we have any questions? I was on mute. Uh, no, oh. we don't have any questions. We've just got nice explanation. It seems like everyone's understanding. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, so now I want to play with something a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a new query here, and um, this is a simplified version of the query that you just saw with the order. I'm just kind of, I mean to like preserve some of these queries for you, so maybe I'll email it on the group if people want to see you know, everything that I've done, I'll, I'll try not to keep deleting some of the queries. So this is a whole new query here, lines 21 through 26. And this is this goes back to, like, Australia accessories. Okay, I want to show you another slicer. So I can say where, and let's go take product, um, and underneath product, um, I've got a bunch of, like, features under here, right? And I can say, okay, what I want is um, a specific style, maybe. Or I can say, maybe I want a specific category of product. Um, um, or maybe I even want like a specific color. Like I want like blue, and I can drag blue here. OK, something weird just happened when I dragged it. By the way, see all those numbers went way down because I sliced and said I only want blue products here. Okay, do you see this ampersand? If I take the ampersand off and I execute that, same numbers. I put the ampersand back, execute that, same numbers, right? Okay, what I'm doing is I'm deciding to either go by the member name or the member ID. So with the ampersands, the ID, without the ampersand, is the name. And you might look at that and think, well, I, why, why are we teaching you that? Well, it's because sometimes things have the same name. And, and a really good example of that is if I come back here and I say, hey, look, I want in my date, um, I want um, like a month and I drop the month here, and I say, I want it where it's January. I wonder if that'll work. It might not work. No, okay, so no. So let's open up month and do like January 2007. So let's drop this and do that. Okay, so you see like, they're being specific. They're saying, I want ID 2007 and ID 1 for January. And then execute that. And I get just that information, right, for the first month of 2007. OK. Um, I can change this and instead take the ampersand out. And it says, hey, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. So maybe what I need to do is like say 01, and it's still not going to know because there's no name for 01. But 
if it's dead, I write out that name and I say January 2007. That's the name actually there, right? This thing right here? That's the name. So if I highlight that and execute it, now I get the same results that I had when it was going by ID. So sometimes people have the same name. Like, believe it or not, I've Googled Brad Cunningham before, and there are more than one Brad Cunningham out there, right? There are, but I'm, actually... I'm, I'm the coolest one. Are you really the first one? No, I'm not the first one by any means. I'm actually not oh, that but there you are. You're number two. underwear either, so. Oh, right. Like, if you, <laughs> if you bing me, right, there are more, there's more, more than one famous Ike Ellis. I, I happen to be the first one. That's me. That's me. That's me. But there's also a black rapper from North Carolina. And uh. so that's, that's the other, I'm not the black rapper. I'm the nerdy looking guy right here. Right? Right. He looks okay. much cooler than you. So. He's way cooler. Than yeah. Yeah, way cooler. Yeah. So, so imagine if you went by name, Ike Ellis, there'd be two results there, and you wouldn't be explicit. You would probably get the first one that was located in the database, not the second one. But if you knew Ike Ellis's ID, you could use the ampersand and get the exact Ike Ellis or Brad Cunningham that you wanted, and avoid the ambiguity. So, sometimes name like January two thousand seven works. Sometimes you have to be explicit and go by go by the ID. Um, so it's important to know the difference. And then um, just want to do a quick time check. It's uh, twelve fifty-two, so we only have about six seven minutes left. But this is good. You, the ampersand yeah, well, thing is the ampersand thing is really good. You explained it to me. I was confused when I was reading about that in uh, in the book. So thank you. Oh yeah, you bet, you bet. So, you know what? Let's let's kind of simplify this a little bit and get rid of this member of the set of the excuse me tuple, and then let's just go to. Actually, I want it's easier to show if we go back by date. So, let me go by like calendar year here. Okay, and then let's just execute this, so you can see there's no calendar year. Okay. Now, I just want to show you some navigation because I think the navigation is fun. So if we do like dot children here, um, oh, we get something awesome. It says, hey, the children function expects a member expression of one argument. I can't give you, look at what failed. It said, I can't give you the children of all these guys. I can only, you know, you're, you're confusing me. So what you can do is you can take the first member of any um, result that you want. Um, let's see. How about, what am I, oh, you know what? It's the dot children function. So from here, what I would do is this. I would say dot children zero dot children. That, that's kind of funky looking, but it's going to take the first member out of it. And that's 2005, right? It says, oh, I can do that. Here's 2005. Or I can take the calendar all the way back, because it seemed to me like it took the semester. And there's, um, oh, so that didn't like that, because it didn't have, uh, it didn't get to 2005. So let's, let's come back to that. OK, so that's like that first half of 2005. And if I want to see what's underneath the first half of 2005, I can say, take the first value, just like a zero-based array, and, oh, I guess that's not going to work. Maybe I don't have any good data, though. Um, maybe I need to do, like, the second half. Maybe that's when I've got good data. There, yeah. Second half gave me quarter three and quarter four. And, I, and if that's 2005, I can say, what's the third member of the year and the first member for children? And that's the third one is 2008, and, the, and the, that's the second member, right? Number one, that's quarter three. And it looks like I don't have any data for quarter four, so it's not showing me that. Um, but if I go to the first half of that year, 
and take a look at the children, I can see quarter one and quarter two. And if I say, oh, I want to see the data for that children, you see how position is like super important inside MDX um, as I navigate the hierarchy? Now it'll show me the months. So it's showing me the third item for the year level. That's the fourth item because it's zero base, right? It's 2008. So 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. That's the fourth one. And then it's saying take the first half of the year and then take the first quarter and give me the month of the first quarter. And that's January, February, or March. We know this. It just looks really funky, doesn't it? But you know what? I could, I don't have to use children for this. If that's really what I wanted, I should probably just be explicit. I should say, CY 2008. That's the first thing I wanted, right? And then I can say, you know, um, the first half of the year. Actually, here's the hierarchy. I can say, um, Let's just do, let's do children here. Okay, oh, children here. Yep, so that's H1 CY 2008. So I can just put that in here. H1 CY 2008. And then I can say dot children here. Give me all the months. And then I can see that. Okay, so that looks kind of funky. Let's let's just come back here for a second, and let's just do 2008. Um, and I want to show you some other things I can do. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do 2007. That's a better that's a better one. So calendar year 2007. I've got three minutes left. I can also lead and lag. So if that's 2007, I can say, please lead one level. Um, actually, let's just do dot lead. OK, it says um, I've got a syntax error. So let's lead one level. So if I'm looking at 2007 and I lead a level, it goes to 2008. Do you see that? And if I say instead of lead, I want you to lag a level, and I'm on 2007, it'll go back to 2006. How cool is that? So you can see that in MDX, position of the data that you're asking for is really important. And you can go back a level and forward a level. Or you can, if you want to be really con confusing, let's lead. So if I, Brad, if I lead 2007, where am I going to go? You're going to go to 2008. Right. If I if I lead negative one at two thousand seven, where am oh, I going to go? Con that's confusing. You're going to go to two thousand six. Right. That's right. So you can put positive and negative numbers there, um, and and play around with it. What happens if you so lag? You guys, what happens if you lag negative one? Do you go forward? Yeah. Oh, that's really. You do go forward. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If you had any questions, what would you do? I would ask you. <laughs> yeah, probably. But you can just type in lag and click on it. And yeah. it says, returns the member that a specified number of positions before a specified member at the member's level. Yeah. So I know that's a you know complicated speak, but like books online kind of tends to be. But it tells you what, exactly what it's going to do. And, and it does that. You can play around with it and see if it does it. I think that's a um, uh, that's a good stopping point. We're right on time here to wrap up. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little MDX lecture in the book. Maybe we should take a look at what we want to teach next. Um, yeah, so we did chapters 10, 11, 12 for this meeting. Uh, and chapter 13 starts talking about uh, the BI semantic model. Right, that's a good thing to know, right? So, so if I, like... Um, look at, we did, oh, this is the reporting services book, and we're on book. So if I go back to my library, and we did the business intelligence book, where is that book? Um, look at, you guys are looking oh, no, at all the books that I read. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, right, so right. it is. It's right up here, yeah. 
you can tell I like science fiction and that my son shares my account and he likes um, reading fiction. Okay, so so here we are at 53% or so. I think it went to 59%. So if we go back to our table of contents, we're gonna we're gonna do some tabular work here for our November meeting. And Um, looks like part want, part four is chapters thirteen and we want fourteen. We chapter thirteen, yeah, and chapter fourteen. Yeah. What do you think? Can we do chapters thirteen and fourteen, and then I think after that we do data mining, and then we're done. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could probably even skip data mining. And just make this a lot, this November meeting our last one, um, and then we'll start a new book maybe the first of the year. I don't know. We'll talk about it. But for right now, I think our homework is going to be just the tabular stuff, just um, chapter thirteen and fourteen, and we'll learn DAX. That's a whole new language. So you just had to learn MDX, and then I'll show you a bunch of DAX demos uh, when you come back to do that. Great. Anyway, yeah. thanks a lot, guys. It, did we answer all your questions? Yeah, we did. This was excellent. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.